Nick, here's your keys. It took two coats. But it's all waxed up, ready for tonight. Biff. Keys. What the world is he talking about? Keys for what? Well, here it is, a 1988 Toyota SR5 4x4 pickup build. This was quite a project. It was very long, about seven months of just body work and a whole lot of long nights. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. I have a video on my channel of me buying this 1988 Toyota SR5 4x4 pickup. And my goal was to turn it into the Marty McFly truck. Now. Let me just say for starters that this is not 1000% screen accurate, but it is super, super close. And if you recall in my last video, um, it's quite hard to find these things, especially here in Wisconsin, because they all rust out the tubular frames in them, or the uh, square frames in them, and uh, the boxes like to rot on them. And we have a lot of body work into this truck, but uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite an experience. If you haven't seen the first video, I would highly recommend watching it. Uh, we basically go over the differences between the McFly truck and uh, the 1988 Toyota. They only made this truck for four years, so again, I'm sorry I keep bringing it up, but these are very hard to find. And uh, an 85, which was used in the movie, is the absolute hardest one to find. So this was pretty close for me, and it was a ton of fun to build. Anyhow, if you have not seen that video, I would highly encourage watching that. Like I was saying before, we go over some of the differences between the McFly truck, the 88, the 85, um, and we kind of show how bad this truck was when it first started. Although it did come from New Mexico, uh, it has lived in the Midwest since about 2003. That being said, we did a lot of uh, work to the frame itself. There was a hole in the frame, and we actually ended up patching that in and uh, making it look pretty decent. The entire underbody of the entire truck has been needle scaled, it has been wire wheeled, it has been degreased, and there's been poor 15 rust preventative put over it. So I'm hoping uh, 
I'm hoping that stops any future problems with rust. The entire truck had been completely sanded down. The uh, fenders in the front were off a of two-wheel drive, so we had to find four-wheel drive ones. We filled uh, as much as we could. The entire bed we took from our other donor truck. If you remember the donor truck, we took that bed off, and we spent nearly about seven months doing body work to the, uh, the bed and the entire truck. I would say the bed itself has over a good thousand hours worth of work done to just that. I made the huge, huge mistake uh, of taking out the windshield because the, uh, the gap in the windshield was, uh, the, the gasket looked funny to me and I wanted to pull it off and get it painted with that off. That was a huge mistake. I would never, ever pull one of these windshields off again. Uh, that was about two months just to get a windshield done on this and uh, it looks great though. Going back to the body, the body was completely sanded down. We had ended up finding the right four-wheel drive uh, fenders for the front. The panel gaps are still a little off all over, but uh, <laughs> it was the best I could do. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I tried my best. That being said, both fenders on the inside are Raptor lined, so any stones that potentially get past that liner in there won't chip away and start letting that rust. The entire body, once it was sanded down and all the holes were fixed, uh, which took the, the longest for sure. That was about the seven months was actually bringing the panels all straight uh, as best as we could. The rail was completely screwed. Uh, both sides of the rails on the bed were completely screwed, um, but I think it looks pretty good now. We put Raptor liner over it um, and fixed it the correct way. The entire body went to a high build 2K primer. Uh, so once we sprayed the entire truck, we did this all in one night, uh, we sprayed the entire truck and then we had to uh, guide coat the entire truck and sand it down and make sure the entire truck was level and uh, that took a decent amount of time. After that, I made the unfortunate mistake of spraying this truck in my shop. Um, it was about 76 degrees that night. This was about July, early July and once we sprayed it, uh, the humidity was quite high and I didn't realize it, and the entire truck looked like Raptor liner. <laughs> so uh, we spent a mere uh, 45 hours cutting and buffing the entire truck. Now I have to give a huge, huge shout out to Sterling Equipment down in Utamala, Florida. If you're looking at building one of these, uh, the Smitty roll bar, uh, the double tube roll bar in the rear and the front and rear bumpers are quite hard to find. Uh, I actually did end up finding a pair here, but after getting some quotes on getting it fixed and uh, sprayed and powder coated and whatnot, um, it was kind of high in price and they still said it probably wouldn't be perfect. So a huge shout out to Lou and the entire team down at Sterling Equipment in Utamala, Florida. Lou and her team make these things brand new. They powder coat them and they ship them right to your door. Uh, I would, if I were to do another one of these, I wouldn't even hesitate. I wouldn't even look for these on the internet. I would just go right to them. I cannot believe the quality of them. They are insane. They're super easy to put on and they look incredible. So a huge shout out to Sterling Equipment down in Utamala, Florida. I'm gonna leave their link down below. Uh, tell them that Nick sent you with the McFly truck and uh, they'll know exactly what you're looking for. So thank you to Lou if you're watching this and the entire team down at Sternley Equipment. Uh, I've gotten tons of compliments on just these themselves. So uh, incredible job, speechless. Another huge thing if you're looking at building one of these and I don't know why they are so hard to find. We actually joke about it all the time, how hard these things are to find are these KC covers. They use five by seven uh, KC rectangle lights on here. And uh, in the movie, they were um, indeed orange fog lights. And <laughs> these are the true orange fog lights. And how I actually found the lights themselves and the covers, not, not the KC covers, but the actual orange lens that goes on the inside, I actually found them at an, uh, an old four by four shop that was pretty local to me. I sent them an email and I asked, uh, if they if they had anything and sure enough he did and he had a brand new set of these five by seven lights with the actual correct orange covers 
uh, that had been sitting in his shop for a very long time and he actually ended up selling them to me and I bought a bunch of more KC stuff from him because this stuff, I cannot believe how hard this stuff is to find. Um, we were kind of talking about it one night in the shop and we think just because people leave them on all the time and you know the sun beats down on them, they tear, they rip. Uh, the, you know, the sun will screw with the color with them. I mean, they're rock guards, you know, these, these KC covers are meant to protect the lights from rocks and whatnot. So, I mean, they take a lot of abuse. So finding the six inch covers were pretty hard. Uh, I spent a lot of money to buy those, uh, those six inch covers up there. Uh, those came from Texas and they're sitting in a barn since uh, the late 80s, early 90s. So those are in really, really good shape. They haven't been in the sun since, you know, you know 25 plus 30 years uh, they'd have been sitting in this barn these 5x7 KC light covers um, I thought were gonna be pretty easy to find these were probably four times as hard to find than those these you'll get lucky sometimes and they'll pop up on eBay marketplace Facebook marketplace and whatnot uh, you just never see these I have I had a heck of a time just finding these 5x7 covers so if you can get your hands on a pair of these buy them up uh, they're probably worth what they're asking because I also paid a, a pretty good penny for these I have three of them so I have one extra one in case one of these rips or something so going to the front of the truck I'll just go over this really quickly uh, the 88 trucks have the wrong grill in them so I actually ended up buying uh, the correct grill for this uh, this is an 85 grill and I use SEMA uh, trim paint to actually tr to paint the front of it it's very close to uh, what is on the truck in the movie. I've studied a couple of screenshots. And uh, actually, a big shout out to Greg, uh, which he will also be getting a shout out at the end of this video, uh, not only because of the banner and whatnot, but he actually recommended to me, he restored the original uh, 85 truck from the movie. He recommended saying, hey, you know, SEMA paint works really great on the front of that. So a uh, big shout out to him. And not only that, but these had to be changed out too. So these are actual bucket housing, or uh, light bucket housings, I think they call them, for the lights. Um, these have to be to an 85 too. So you can't use 88, you know, bucket housings on here with the 85 grill and vice versa. You have to use all 85 stuff. So all that is brand new. We got brand new corner marker lights, brand new turn signals down here. I just wanted everything to be nice and shiny and uh, nice and new. So. Uh, all of that was changed out. So in the first video, we talked about raising up this truck and if I wanted to leave it at stock height. Um, I did go with a lift indeed for this and they only make one lift for the 88. Uh, it is a three inch uh, in the front and a two inch in the back. So it's almost a leveling kit. Um, I was kind of torn between this. I didn't really like doing it. Uh, the kit itself was kind of cheap and I wasn't a huge fan of it. We did go with bigger tires. Uh, 33 inch uh, and the US wheels uh, they still make so um, if you want these rims and these caps they still make them so that's pretty easy to find but we did go with bigger tires the lift kit uh, the smallest one I could find like I said three inch in the front two in the rear just to make it level um, and then we did go with some bigger shocks on it and it rides very very well I'm very impressed with how it rides my mud flaps were in pretty bad condition so we ended up painting and restoring those uh, they turned out pretty good. I didn't have the SEMA paint at the time, so that's just flat black paint. Um, but I would definitely like to repaint that in the future and make it SEMA black. Mud flaps in the front, I actually lucked out in one of the Toyota groups. Um, uh, I only had one of these mud flaps when we first bought the truck. And I joined the uh, Toyota pickup group. And sure enough, a guy off in 85 uh, was selling a pair of mud flaps. And so I ended up buying both of those off of him. They came from California. They are in beautiful shape, so really lucked out with that. Under the rear of the truck, uh, we got new taillights for it because, again, just like I was saying in the front, I wanted uh, brand new stuff on this. So we did go with new taillights on it. Uh, the Toyota sticker also came from Greg, who restored the first or the original truck from the movie, Part 2 and 3. Greg also supplied us the license plate there, which is a replica from the movie. And the actual frame itself, I got laser engraved. The actual frame itself, I got from a guy that uh, next city over from me. He actually uh, laser engraved this, and uh, I sent him a couple screenshots of kind of what I was after, and he built it, and incredible job. I, I can't believe how well it turned out. I never thought that a plate uh, could actually get so many compliments, and uh, it, it did. Uh, people are actually wondering where to get it. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful 
license plate frames. So if you're looking at getting one of those, um, I'm gonna leave his business down in the description below. Check out that four by four. That is hot. So all jokes aside, I actually custom made this sticker and uh, it was kind of expensive and I was kind of on the fence if I really should add it or not and I'm really glad I did. So if you're also looking to get one of these stickers, uh, get in contact with me and I can get one made up for you. Uh, I've had a few people take pictures of that and they absolutely love that picture. Um, not only we got Marty McFly here, but actually on the other side of the truck, we have Abyss Auto Detailing there too, which can be found on Redbubble. When we actually mounted the roll bar, uh, we actually did all the lighting through the entire roll bar. Now, uh, Sterling Equipment, um, they give you a, an instruction book with, with this and they actually tell you, yes, you can drill into these. They have holes on the bottom of the actual legs ready to go. Um, but we had to drill just holes on the top, very easy, just measured it out. We had some new drill bits drilled right through it. Uh, we did all the wiring underneath the truck. We have a quick play connector uh, to this roll bar, so if this roll bar or this bed ever needed to be separated from this truck, uh, just one plug and the entire light bar would be disconnected from the entire truck. So in the first video, if you remember, uh, we were going to put these badges on here from the other truck. We did, so that's all screen accurate. Uh, the extra cab, uh, this was all pretty good shape, this decal on there, so we didn't have to touch any of that. Um, the door handles are now all black. They were chrome. We want all the black, uh, just like in the movie. These mirrors themselves, incredibly hard to find, but they look incredibly cool. So for the interior of the truck, uh, nothing too, uh, too special at all here. Uh, the only thing really, really cool is our other truck uh, actually had the original seats from the movie, uh, 8586 seats. So this is the exact same material. The only bad part is, is they are starting to tear. This one's got a pretty good tear in it. The driver's seat is in very, very bad shape. So um, we will have to get these redone. We have the correct dash in there, uh, the correct wheel. We had to get the, the wheel off of a 4Runner. Uh, from 85, so that's all the same there. All the KC lights uh, are accessible right at the touch of your finger. All of that is hardwired in, all of that is done. The dash, we replaced the dash, um, we steam cleaned the carpet. The interior, not a ton of work was done to it, but um, a lot of taping off was done when we had to paint all these door jams and stuff. So, um, other than that, the interior is very, very close. Uh, to screen accurate. So like I was saying before, I have to give a special shout out to Greg over at Greg's Restorations. Uh, he made up this banner, he sells them on his eBay store if you're looking to buy one of these. Uh, they are available. He made the plate for us and like I said, he's actually in the Marty McFly pickup truck build group. Uh, he actually gave me the recommendation for the SEMA black trim paint. Um, not only that, but throughout the way too, I've asked him a decent amount of questions and he has answered everything. So big shout out to Greg from Greg's Restorations. Uh, we actually caught wind a few months ago that the DeLorean 40th anniversary show was going to be going on. And uh, this truck was not even close to being done. And uh, we thought it'd be kind of cool if, hey, if we could get this thing done for the show, which would be August 4th, uh, maybe we'd bring it down and we'd show it at the uh, DeLorean show. And sure enough, about two weeks left until the show and we were buffing this thing. At the nick of time, we just beat it and we actually went down to the DeLorean show. Um, Zach DeLorean actually uh, got my picture with him in front of the truck and uh, he complimented it saying it was very cool. Huge shout out to Mike down at DMC Midwest and Susie, uh, Stephanie, all of them for letting me bring it. That was very cool for them to say, hey, bring it on down. Uh, considering it was a DeLorean show and uh, they let me bring uh, 
the Marty McFly truck. So huge shout out to them too. Thank you so much for letting me bring it down. Well, that about does it for the 1988 Toyota SR5 4x4 pickup build. I had a lot of fun building this. I hope you guys think it looks like Marty's truck. I think it looks pretty dang close. I think we did a really good job. Um, I had so much fun doing this, I'd probably do another one. In fact, if you want one done, shoot me an email down below. I, maybe I can at least help you build one, or I'd be willing to build another one. Who knows? Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. We actually picked up a 1986 Pulse Lightstar. So uh, watch for a video on that pretty soon. Until then, I will see you in the next video. There's nothing to be scared of. All it takes is a little self-confidence. You know, if you put your mind in, you can accomplish anything.